If I wanted to kill my husband, I'd do it. And I wouldn't get caught. How? I'd scare him to death. Hey, it's Chanel, and welcome to my spooky season-themed reading vlog in honor of Halloween, my favorite time of the year. Um, to explain what's going on down here, I'll try to keep my elbows out of sight. I had quite a horrific morning. It was, a, it was very on theme. I went to get a blood test done. I get about six to 12 a year. Normally it's very standard. Unfortunately today an accident occurred and I won't go into horrific detail because it, it was quite gruesome, but the person doing the blood test slipped with the needle in the hand in my arm and things happened and I was pretty much shish kebabbed and on the floor in a pool of my own blood. It was very alarming start to the morning. I am okay now. They did patch me up. I did end up having to have a blood test done on the other arm because yeah, they're not going to scoop up the pool on the floor into vials. I had to have it fresh from the vein. So I did end up having to get my other arm punctured, but this one went fine. This one's fine. It's just a bandaid. This is cool. This one, this arm, not cool. Uh, I do have blood clotting disorders, so I do have to be careful. I cannot lift anything. I have to make sure that I don't develop a hematoma and things of that nature. So I am in quite a bit of pain. I was in shock but I'm doing better now. And it did derail my plans. I had all these plans and I was gonna take you along with me to these spooky places, but I cannot go anywhere. I cannot lift anything and I have to be very careful that this doesn't turn into a worse injury. So I thought, what can I do? I can put on some like vampy makeup and tell you what books I do plan on reading in this vlog. So that's what we're doing. I just realized that this is digging and I'm getting like crazy, crazy back fat. I feel like a sausage right now because this is very binding I, I, I like to bind i like to be bound so let me tell you what's on the agenda for this horror themed book reading vlog i don't really love a lot of horror most of the horror i like is a sub horror genre so maybe horror sci-fi like a short stay in hell or maybe fantasy horror like salt grows heavy or juniper and thorn i like a bit of a, a mix generally so i've done that with the books i've selected but i've also picked some straight horror books i'm not going to tell you what they're all about now because otherwise i'll just be doubling up we don't want repetitiveness here so i will tell you about the plot of the books when i'm reviewing them but i'll show you what's on the agenda so first up i thought i would start with a graphic novel this is called when i arrived at the castle by emily carroll like look at that cover can I get it without the ring light? I'm sorry, it's still not super light and bright here, but look at this beautiful blood and blackness. Just love, love. I think I'm going to love this. So this is on the docket. Then I went to Metropolis Bookstore and picked a whole bunch of books, including this absolute behemoth. This is Serious Weakness by Paul Pantene, Charity Heartscape. What a name. So this is the back. It looks like, I guess this is meant to be blood. It is so big, it's like over 600 pages. So I've also gotten the ebook for this because yeah, my arthritis doesn't love this kind of thickness in books. Uh, but yeah, that is that is the cover, like pretty horrific looking. Then we've got this one, beautiful rose petal. Love, I just stroke the books when they've got rose petal. This is called Visions by Troy James Weaver. And I love it that they don't reflect the, the ring light. So that's fantastic. So this is another of the books. I try to also pick books that I had never heard of before. So ones that aren't super famous horror books. So maybe you can get introduced to something new that you've never never read before. Some fresh meat for the horror plate. So here we've got, the, I love this cover, Poking Holes by Juan Valencia. And it says, people are holes waiting to be filled. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see if I can handle this. <laughs> Look, I think I will leave this reading vlog being truly horrified. <laughs> I probably won't love anything, but like I said, remember, I am not a horror expert lover. So going outside of my comfort zone for this, but hopefully it's for your benefit. Next up, we have The Imposium, a health resort horror story by Olga Tokartsuk. And, and it's translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. So it's definitely got a different color scheme compared to all of the other red and black books so far. But I picked this one because this is written by the author who wrote drive your plow over the bones of the dead. I love that. It was definitely more a lit fic slash thriller than a horror, but I just love the writing. Even though it was translated, it was still absolutely lush and gorgeous and it had the vibes. So I thought I would check out their book here. Now the ones that are still en route to me or that I am borrowing online, we've got The Pumpkin Princess and The Forever Night. And this is a middle grade graphic novel. I had to have something 
not super horrific in here. <laughs> I needed something tame. And this is what I've chosen for that because it was also on my TBR for this month. So I thought, perfect, two birds, one stone and a good break in between if these are really heavy and I'm struggling, you know, to have something light and benign, but still spooky season themed. I've also got a book called Bonding. I haven't written the author's name down, but I'll put the picture up here. So this was also coming from Metropolis Bookstore and we'll see what that's like. Oh, I think it's Maggie Siebert, isn't it? Am I right? Did I get it right? <laughs> Did I get it correct? And I'm not great with names, but I'm getting, somehow I'm getting better at remembering author's names, not character names, but the author's names. And the last book that I'm picking for my spooky themed vlog is Sugar by Mia, I want to say Ballard. We'll see if I was right again. Two for two would be fantastic. This is an arc from NetGalley and I picked this because of the cover. I'm not going to lie. The cover just blew me away. I am frothing over this. Gorgeous. Stunning. I... I'm a third of the way through it, but I'm not going to talk about it until I've finished it. I am liking it so far. It is very full on. It's very bloody and gruesome and murderous and unhinged. And I think I might, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go straight into this horror reading vlog. I am going to be honest with you. I might need to film another vlog and then come back to this one because I just don't know after this mishap today if I can stomach it, honestly. It might be too, too soon, too soon. But those are the books that I have chosen for this vlog, I'm also going to watch some horror films because why not? Let's make it all spooky. And maybe I'll even throw in a spooky baking thing if I feel like it. But the films I'm choosing, obviously I'm choosing tamer ones. I can't do full on horror, body horror. I can't stomach it. So I'm choosing The Love Witch, which I have seen so many shots of and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Just beautiful cinematography, amazing costuming, gorgeous makeup. It looks like something I could definitely stomach and handle. And even though I didn't love the author's book, Bluebeard's Castle, I think it was, the aesthetic of this movie is doing so many things for me. I love it. So I'm going to watch that one because I also think it's not going to be super scary. Sylvie, Sylvie's just gone into the cupboard. But besides that movie, sorry, I'll keep my, I'll keep my elbows low. Maybe I'll hunch down. All right, hopefully they're out of frame because I know some people freak out with bandages. The other movie I'm going to try out is Blink Twice. So this is a newer film. I think it's directed by Zoe Kravitz. I might be wrong. It's got Channing Tatum, and normally he's a comic relief guy. So we'll see how he does in a horror movie. I believe people go to an island and people start dying. But it looked interesting, and it looked like something I could stomach. So, sorry, <laughs> we'll see how I go with that. Let me know if there are horror movies out there that you think are good for people who can't stomach a lot of horror, maybe a bit more arty, across genre, things of that vein. Look, Like, for instance, I love Hellboy by Guillermo del Toro. I, even though I enjoyed Pan's Labyrinth, it effed me up. Like I still to this day remember that beer bottle scene in incredible detail and I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't. That's turned my stomach so that is not a horror I can take. So yeah, sometimes some things work, some things a bit too much for me. I'm, I'm a bit of a wuss with, with visual depictions of body horror especially. I don't like the violence, the heavy violence. Grosses me out. Like, for instance, even in the movie Irreversible with Monica Bellucci. Man, that turned my stomach. So bad. So bad. So, yeah, those are the two films that I've got on lined up to watch this spooky season. And I will see you guys again once I have read some of these books and seen some of the movies. The apologies if my energy was very weird. I'm still, like I said, a bit unsettled after this morning's turn of events. But I wanted to do something today. So I thought, yeah, put on some makeup, tell you about the books, get this vlog introed. And I feel accomplished, but I'll see you guys soon. It's showtime. I don't think I found my Prince Charming yet. I think I found the formula. You know, I've been studying parapsychology and I understand men. It's supposed to be brains. Rice crispy brain treats. So these are my little pumpkin cheesecake things. <laughs> I think they would have looked super cute with a little clove sticking out the top like a stalk, but otherwise our second spooky treat. Hey guys, welcome to the rest of the spooky vlog. Today I am channeling The Love Witch, so that's the look I've gone for. I did watch the movie. I love the cinematography, the costuming, the makeup, the set design. So gorgeous. It is a very camp cheesy movie the acting is not great 
the storyline is wacky, but it was fun. It's a silly movie, but it was fun. And like I said, it was an absolute feast for the eyes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And not very scary or gory, but I did enjoy it. I also watched Blink twice. So that was definitely a thriller, a very stabby, bloody thriller. I thought it was okay. It was just a bit unbelievable. I didn't really buy the main character. I just felt nothing from her. I needed someone with a bit more gravitas, personality, because the movie really does hinge on her the most. But yeah, it was okay, just mm, a bit average. So The Love Witch was definitely my favorite horror movie out of the two that I chose to watch. So let's talk about the books that I read. And as you would have noticed in editing, I would have changed that I did swap out one of the books because it turns out it wasn't a graphic novel. It was an actual chapter book and I just wasn't in the mood to read a big middle grade book. So I did swap that out for a different one. But before I get ahead of myself, let's have a look. So we've got When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll. So I'll show you the illustrations, which are absolutely gorgeous. This was the best thing about this book, the illustration style, the color palette. I think it's just so evocative and stunning. And all of my three stars go towards the illustrations because the story makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> I didn't get it. You have obviously a vampire lady and then you've got this sort of monster girl and she goes to the castle and you can tell that she's been killing all the girls but then something happens and I don't get it. I really, I was left confounded. Didn't understand what went on. So yeah, the vibes and the colors gorgeous. The plot itself, huh, what? What do you mean? So this was a three star for me. It's not too scary in terms of the graphics. So I definitely think if you like more mild horror, this could be for you. Then I picked up The Impusium. This is by Olga Turkatsuk, translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. This also had a bit of mixed media in here, which I was not expecting. I'll see if I can find you one. Like for instance, here we've got a little picture in the corner there. We've got a map here. And there are some other little pictures sprinkled about. I picked this up because I loved Olga's book, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which is an eerie thriller murder mystery, which had just immaculate vibes, really beautiful, lush prose, an interesting character and plot. Ah, oh, this one didn't have any of those things. So we've got a man who's got tuberculosis and they go to this men's health retreat in this little village and this is a place where they the men love to shoot the shit you know bit of a boys club they love to talk so i thought i could do this without the cats coming in but i cut my closed door they won't stand for it so as i was saying the men love to discuss things mostly the inferiority of women the poor things it's not their fault their brains are just smaller and as much as they try to emulate men they just can't, they're just lesser than. And while he's there, he learns that men are being killed every year in this, in this village in very mysterious ways. And the locals believe that there is something supernatural in the woods dismembering men. I will say the horror is so light, so light in this. And the book is incredibly slow. It's, and nothing, nothing much really happens. It's a lot of talking. I really didn't care for the conversations between the men. Couldn't care less what they were talking about. People saying it's a feminist book and I get why there is sort of a twist at the end, which is, yeah, kind of interesting, but it was not enough. When you learn eventually what's going on, it's like, okay, nothing, nothing mind blowing there. And I've read enough of these books with these particular kind of character twists that I could see it coming. So that wasn't really a surprise to me, but I could see how people were like, oh, interesting. I gave it a two stars. I really didn't like it. It did nothing, especially I read it as a horror book and I wasn't horrified in the slightest and I was bored. I was a bit bored. So this one just didn't have the magic of Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. I would definitely recommend that one over this one. And I even had to look up, was it translated by the same person? Because maybe a different translator has changed the style, but no, it's the same translator. So it's just, yeah, Olga's writing and story in this one didn't grab me. I'm going to leave my favorite read for last. And I'm going to talk about the books I read next. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a major horror girly. I would say my favorite kind of horror are ones that are in fantasy or in sci-fi or a psychological. I don't like a lot of intense, dark themes. Unfortunately, all of the books that I read next 
possess those and I had a hard time so I didn't like these but maybe if you like your horror to really go there to look at the absolute depths of darkness that human beings are capable of this might be for you a lot of these were by the same publishing company and I think this publisher and I we just don't have the same tastes um, that publisher is called Apocalypse Party so like I said if you like the, the books that are on the far end on the weirdness scale so absolutely bizarre full-on extreme then this would be a, a publishing company I would recommend to you so I'm going to talk about them uh, before them I'll talk about one that wasn't published by them so I believe this was independently published so this is called Serious Weakness I chose all of these horror books based on their covers not being too horrific and their blurbs not being too dark and severe so I thought I was still getting a horror book maybe that was going to push me out of my comfort zone but not to the extent that these books did okay I had to stop because my ex was mowing the lawns it's too loud so we'll go back to this book so I believe this is independently published because it literally just starts as soon as you open the page it just goes into it and the way it's formatted it just feels self-published ah oh, god I was not trying to pick books that were extreme however it seems that I have inadvertently done so so this particular book and I'm going to put it on this side so you're not getting the the glare this particular oh, you're still getting the glare so this particular book is very very long uh it the writing style feels very pedestrian and and basic to me they literally would write the words haha in the dialogue so the person would say yeah and then I went down the street haha but you know me and it was done repeatedly I don't know I just I felt it feels a bit what patty if you catch my drift the story itself is also <laughs> not, not to my taste at all so this book you follow a young man who gets kidnapped and tortured and I guess ends up getting kind of Stockholm syndrome for their abuser kidnapper it is very violent there is a lot of sexual assault and slurs and violence in this book and it just made me feel ill that's just how I feel I just wanted it to be done and over and it just kept going and going and going and I think the main person has ALS I think it was if it was an ALS I'll put the other condition on there and just yeah the the, the slurs and that being said were just gross like I get it the kidnapper is a vile, vile human being and a monster. But this whole experience was, was just uncomfortable. I felt the story was stupid. And the writing wasn't great. The characters were awful. I There was nothing I enjoyed about this. If I could give zero stars, I would. I didn't like it. And I guess, yeah, it's kind of horror I don't like and I guess the kind of horror I don't like is anything that is too extreme with violence with sex with not profanity but like slurs and bigotism and just all of all of those things just really all of the most depraved human behavior that you can think of like that kind of horror it's and it's, it's not particularly clever in terms of you know the plot line or anything like that so I did not like it I cannot give you a recommendation of who I think would with the net with the, all these following books like I said it's, it's if you want just really messed up shit then all of the books that I'm talking about from this point forward besides the last one um would appeal to you but yeah I just don't want that much heaviness even in a horror so this was not for me this was by Porpentine Charity Heartscape like cool name and cool cover very cool cover but yeah like I said I just with this book and the following ones I feel a little hoodwinked in that I wasn't anticipating what I was getting like the blurb the blurb for this like this one didn't even have a blurb there's no blurb on Goodreads there's no description of what it is but I don't know I just thought it would be okay but <laughs> not for me and then I picked up the book Bonding by Maggie Siebert uh, once again this one did not have a blurb and I think that's a warning sign for me in the future if there is no blurb and there is no blurb on Goodreads and all you're getting at most is someone else's uh, very lyrical description of what the book is about that's a warning sign that the matter is too dark for me 
So this one was a sort of collection of short stories and you have one where the opening story is about a woman who cleans brothels and so she is cleaning up someone's spunk and a, a man comes in, one of the sex workers, and he starts to masturbate while approaching her with obviously the intent to rape her and she decides, not today, Satan, and literally gut, punch him, gut punches him. And when I say literally gut punches him, her entire fist ends up in his internal abdominal cavity and it's sort of like his body is sucking her in and while this is going on, he's jacking off furiously and once he ejaculates, he then turns into this sort of like pile of goo and she's able to withdraw her arm. That's the opening story. I didn't really care for any of the stories in here. I felt like too, they, they ended very unsatisfactorily, like as if they were just in the middle of a story, so they just abruptly would end. The best one I would say would be the story, was it called Amon? And it was about a, um, a fiery young boy and his friendship with another young boy. And it was told almost in a police interview format where the parents are being debriefed afterwards and telling their version of events. So that one was okay. I've decided to give this one a one star. Once again, I didn't, I just didn't enjoy it. It, it wasn't for me. And I'll move on to the next one. So next up we have Visions by Troy James Weaver. So this is the cover. The cover's kind of cool. Um, the blurb says, so I'm going to read you the blurb before I tell you what this book is actually about. It says, Visions chronicles a hypnotic descent from childhood to adulthood. A boy sees angels, finds love, loses it, and becomes heartbreakingly aware of the world around him. Using a dreamy prose that calls to mind the films of Harmony Corinne, I don't know that person, Weaver crafts a deft and disturbing portrait of the young life of a David Koresh-like cult figure. So this book is basically religious pedophilia and sexual assault. That is the whole book. You've got a young boy who I think is 10 at the beginning and is sexually assaulted by a peer of his under the guise of religion. This is what God wants. He gets uh, an obsession with winding his 10-year-old girlfriend's necklace around his pipi tuchen while well, stuff happens and the, the kids are sexually active and molested and raped by adults, um, it is gross. There, if I could once again give a zero star, I would. This is not for me. And I feel like if books contain pedophilia and incestual rape, there should be a tag for it. <laughs> like on Goodreads, please. Someone just put that there because I would steer clear of those kinds of books. And like I said, these books too, the books that I picked were also very highly rated. So all of them have over a four stars on Goodreads, some of them like 4.5. So the fact that the covers weren't too bad, the blurbs sounded okay, and then the Goodreads ratings were so high, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be that shocked or disturbed <laughs> by the content. But unfortunately, that was not the case. So look, yeah, I just feel like it, it needs better advertisement in terms of signaling what the content of the book actually is because I paid money for these books and I would rather not have and have, would have rather have given you know my little channel a platform to a book that is more to my taste so yeah this one was religious uh, pedophilia so and that is on page it is on page so this was not for me I didn't like anything about it once again not the characters not the writing not the setting nothing this was uh, Visions by Troy James Weaver, which I would give as zero stars if I could. Then we have Poking Holes, which was the most disappointing because this cover is stunning. I absolutely love the cover. This is by one Valencia. This is a sh collection of short stories again. And the first one that opens up is about a woman who is obsessed with poking holes into people. And she starts with like syringes and she works her way up to making bigger holes. And I thought, oh, okay, like it's disturbing. It's horrific. It's body horror. But I'm like, okay, I can handle it. Unfortunately, much like the other book, this ends up going into a lot of sexual pedo incestual violence. I don't want to read about that stuff. It's not my jam. It's not my kind of horror, like I said. To each their own, but yeah, anything to do with pedophilia, incest, rape, I don't I don't want it. <laughs> so yeah, this I'm not going to talk about each of the stories. I'm not like I said, I don't want to talk in detail about the plots of these because they're just so disturbing and yuck. Uh, once again, if I could give it zero stars, I would. And um, yeah, I'm just upset that I spent my money on these books. So I definitely don't want them in my home. We'll be giving them away. I, 
and if not, if no one wants them in my book giveaway, I don't know what to do with them. I, I do not feel comfortable donating them to little libraries or, or donation bins. I think I would have to ask some secondhand bookshops if they wanted them. Otherwise, I will have to throw them away, which hurts me to say, but yeah. So now that the most intense horrors are out of the way, the last book I read, which was an art from Nat Galley, and that was Sugar by Mia Ballard, which has just one of my favorite covers I've seen. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This one was a little, a little more tame. I guess now after having read, you know, like intense stuff, I'm not as shocked. My, I don't want to say tolerance for extreme, but I guess my sensitivity has dulled a bit because if it's not this, then it seems tame in comparison, you know? And I'm sure there's even more depraved, dark, horrific stuff than these kinds of books out there. It's just, these are, you know, way on one end of the spectrum that I didn't want to touch. So in comparison, this book, seems benign <laughs> but maybe not for everyone the main character does bite off a man's johnson with her teeth eat your dick like kobayashi <laughs> and he's incredibly unhinged and violent so you have satara who a lot of people were comparing to the character in the love witch and i do see the comparisons this woman just wants to love and be loved, but she's going about it in the worst way possible. You do not want this woman to set her sights on you. Let me just tell you, you don't want her love. You don't want her attention. She mostly murders men and sometimes her victims, you can say that the murder is justified, but a lot of the times it ain't, it really ain't. So she is psychotic and her husband has just cheated on her and she decides to go to a love witch because she also has this major crush on this guy at work who just won't give her the time of the day. This married man just won't accept her advances. So she goes to a love witch to put a spell on him so that he'll fall in love with her. And like I said, this is just a lot of murder. It is very fast paced. There's stuff going on from the get go. There are other characters involved. There's a whole town. It's all intertwined. In comparison to the other books, it was good, I guess. I think it skewed my rating. I am giving it a, a three stars, but maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much if I hadn't read these other books first, because for me, the, the plot line just got very silly at the end. It was very over the top, I guess, like The Love Witch. It wasn't believable. It was kind of cheesy, even though it was talking about a kind a, a serial killer, but I just didn't find it plausible with the twist at the end, I'm like, okay, now this is getting a bit much, isn't it? But if you want an over the top female serial killer, mad woman, delusional kind of book, this would be the one for you. Like I said, it's fast paced, it's easy to read. The characters are very quirky and vibrant. And it's almost like, it's almost got like a Desperate Housewives kind of quality to it, if you know what I mean. But I guess that was my favorite read of this, of this, spooky horror themed vlog i would like i said i was not trying to find books as depraved as this i think going forward when it comes to horror i will stick to mass market bookstores because <laughs> i know they're not going to be stocking this kind of stuff and I'm, I'm pretty safe in terms of how dark is it going to get and i'm and not not choosing horror from indie bookstores, especially Metropolis, which is already, it's veered on the weird. And in terms of horror, it just goes, oh, let's, let's do the real taboo shit, guys. <laughs> not, it's not for me. I will quickly recap the books that I read in this particular vlog. So we start in order from my least favorite. So we'll start with, oh, what's my least favorite? Probably this one, because it is just the one story and I hated the story. So this is Serious Weakness by Porpatine Charity Heartscape, and I gave this a zero stars. And then we've got Poking Holes by Juan Valencia, which I gave zero stars. Visions by Troy James Weaver, which I gave zero stars. Bonding by Maggie Siebert, which I gave, I give that one star. I think I gave that an actual one star. Then we've got The Empyseum or Impusium by Olga Tokarczuk, which I gave two stars. Then When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll, which I gave three stars. And my favourite read of this reading blog was Sugar by Mia Ballard, which I gave three stars. Let me know what your favourite horror book is. And let me know too, 
what you are deciding to dress up as for Halloween. I'm always interested to see what costumes people go for. Until next time, stay wild, spooky child.